kids. Welcome to Papa's Bible Stories. Every week or two, I pick a Bible story to talk to my kids about. I have a beautiful son, Jacob, who is seven, and a beautiful daughter, Leah, who is four. And these stories are for them. But even though these stories are for my kids, Jacob, Leah, and I would love it very much if you decided to join us. What do you say? Let's get started. So do you kids always remember what we talked about last week? That's right, the snake. Satan had come and taken control of a snake and got Adam and Eve to disobey God and join him in his fight against God. But God didn't give up on us. Even though humanity had chosen Satan, one day God would send a rescuer, someone who would come and save us from Satan, someone who would be our savior. Now, since Adam and Eve had chosen Satan, God knew that we would disobey him and do bad things sometimes. This was now Satan's world, and Satan would be doing his best to make sure that people did bad things. So, right after Adam and Eve left the garden, God gave them a way of saying sorry. And that way of saying sorry was by making an offering. In order to make an offering, they were supposed to make a pile of rocks, called an altar, bring a lamb, which is a young sheep, or a kid, which is a young goat, kill it on top of the altar, and then burn it. Well, that sounds terrible. Have you kids those ever seen an animal be killed? By animal, I don't mean like a grasshopper or a frog. I mean like a a cat or a dog or or maybe some kind of bigger animal. I don't think you have. Even Papa hasn't seen a cat or a dog be killed. But Papa has seen a lot of chickens be killed. And once I saw a dog kill a big muskrat. You aren't going to understand it until you see it. But it is a horrible thing to watch the life flow out of an animal. And now try to imagine that every time you disobeyed or did something bad, that you had to kill an innocent animal. Why in the world would God choose that as the way of saying sorry? Well, God wanted us to have a regular reminder that disobeying God and doing bad things is horrible. Sometimes the consequences of doing bad things or disobeying doesn't happen right away. But with the offering, there was no way getting around it. They would have to see up close and personal how horrible it was to sin. And God knew that it would help discourage them from continuing to disobey and do bad things. Also, the offering was to give them hope. God had promised Adam and Eve that he would send someone to rescue us from Satan a savior. Our savior would be someone who had never done bad things, who was completely innocent. And if he was going to save us, he was going to have to take the punishment that we would have received in the garden. And our savior would have to be killed, just like that innocent lamb on the altar. So does that make sense? Great. So God gave Adam and Eve the offering as a way of saying sorry. And after some time went by, the Bible says that Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. So Cain was the first baby born ever. When God had created Adam and Eve, he created them as full-grown adults. They had never even seen a baby before. And I'm sure they struggled as they tried to figure out how to take care of this first baby ever. Believe it or not, kidzos, but taking care of a baby is not easy. But I also know that they loved Cain, 
just like how Papa and Mama love you guys. And all of Cain's firsts, his first steps, his first words, and all the rest of his firsts would have brought Adam and Eve a lot of joy. And then they had another son, Abel. And I'm sure that they loved Abel just as much as Cain. And they were just as excited for all his firsts and to see the brothers grow up together. And as Cain and Abel grew up and got old enough to understand, Adam and Eve would have shared with them what had happened in the garden and about why they now had lives that were hard and full of pain and death. And that God had a plan to send someone to rescue them one day. And of course, Adam and Eve would have been careful to show them how to make offerings to God. Then the Bible says that Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Cain grew up and became a farmer, and Abel grew up and became a shepherd. And the Bible continues. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Now, for an offering, do you kids always remember what they were supposed to bring? That's right, a lamb or a kid. Abel brought a lamb. But what did Cain bring? Fruits and vegetables. rut row. I wonder what God was going to do. The Bible says that the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So, Cain did not do what God had asked him to do, and so his offering wasn't accepted. Now, of course, that's when Cain said, oh, oh yes, Lord, you are totally right. Yes, you said a lamb or a kid, and I am sorry, and I will fix it, right? Nope. You guys heard what the Bible said. Cain did not feel sorry at all, and instead, Cain gets angry. The Bible continues. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. I want you kidzos to pay special attention to what God is saying here to Cain. Cain is angry. And God says to Cain, why are you angry? God wants Cain to think about why he is angry and to think about whether he has a good reason to be angry. If Cain had just tried not to be angry for just a second and thought about it, he would have realized that there was no good reason to be angry. God's instructions on how to bring an offering were very clear. Bring a lamb or bring a kid. And Cain had brought fruits and vegetables. Cain was in the wrong. You see, kidzos, it's important to question our emotions. Just because we feel something does not necessarily mean that it's for a good reason. God wants us to rule over our emotions, especially the strong ones like anger and jealousy. Now, what did Cain decide to do? Well, kidzos, unfortunately, Cain did not listen to God, and he allowed his anger to build and build, until finally, Cain did something terrible. And the Bible says that Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Oh, kidzos, Cain got so angry that he killed his little brother. Instead of controlling his anger, Cain's anger controlled him. And now he had done something that he couldn't 
take back. The Bible continues. Then the Lord God said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? Now God knew full well where Abel was and what had happened to him. But just like his parents, God was giving him a chance to take responsibility and to apologize. And of course, that's what Cain did, right? Well, no. Cain replied, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. So God punished Cain by taking away his ability to farm. Cain was now a farmer that couldn't grow anything. Also, God sent him away with his family to live far away from Adam and Eve. And when Adam and Eve eventually found out what had happened to Abel, I can't even imagine how sad they must have been. They had started their lives living in a perfect place with no pain and no death. Not even plants or animals ever died. And now their own precious son had died. And he hadn't died in some kind of accident, but his older brother, who, whom they also loved with all their hearts, had killed him. And now, not only was one son gone, but because Cain had been sent away as part of his punishment, now both sons were gone, and they were alone. They must have cried and cried and cried. The Bible says that Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of the garden. And that's where Cain went on to have children. And his children went on to have children of their own and children of their own and so on and so on. And because Cain was not able to question his anger, he never let it go, and he always continued to be angry against God. And because of that, all of his family, who eventually became thousands of people, all became an angry, violent people. This must have been so hard for Adam and Eve. Not only were they alone, but they were eventually surrounded by a people who hated God. But God didn't leave Adam and Eve alone. They went on to have a third son, Seth. And he went on to have children. And his children went on to have children of their own. And so on and so forth. Until there were thousands of them too. And Seth was faithful to God. And Seth's family were also faithful to God. And now the earth was not only full of angry and violent people but also a good and kind people who loved God and who looked forward to the day when their Savior would come and rescue them. All right, kidzos, that's it for this episode. What did you guys think about the story? Well, in a week or two, we're going to pick up the story again with one of the biggest events in the Bible, the flood. And to all the kids tuning in, I hope you have an awesome day. God be with you, and I hope we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.